um, as a kid, I was always a drawer. You know, I had big imagination. I wasn't your necessarily studious type, but I always fell in love with uh, art, drawing, cartoons, and, and video games. Um, as, I, as I started to grow up a little bit more, the attention to that sort of passion was really realized. I found myself drawing all day, all night, and, and it was a sense of accomplishment, really. Unfortunately, when I hit college, I was more kind of pigeonholed and trying to go into a um, university, uh, kind of going more into like the regular academic route. But I knew that wasn't for me, you know, and, and something tickled my, my soul to say, you know, you got to follow your passion. And so what I did was I, I sort of dropped out of college and literally just started to draw on my own time. I then ran into a friend of mine who was attending a local city college, Pasadena City College, and he was like, hey man, why don't you drop by our art class and check it out? And it was a remedial art class I went in and it blew me away. I saw all of these students who were in college very, very geared towards trying to make something happen with art. Uh, soon after, I attended Art Center after making a portfolio, um, studied illustration actually and then started to sort of gear that ability of drawing and painting more towards kind of character design and environment design. When I went into Art Center, I mean, it was, I felt like I was going into a battle. You know, I had no idea what was gonna go on. I had no idea who I was gonna face or what I was gonna face. You had basically the best drawers and, and artists from every high school in the world, in colleges, coming to that school and, and, and just being, you know, battling it out. And I felt so behind. And one person told me, um, while I was asking a mentor of mine, he goes, James, do you think you picked Art Center? And I was like, yeah, I picked that school because I want to go there. And he said, you know what? I think Art Center picked you because you have the personality and you have the sort of competitive nature naturally to want to you know be really you know kind of go for it and and I heard that and it was really funny because it was just about looking at it from a different angle you know what I mean the same situation but looking at it at a positive way instead of sort of the negative way right and I started to look at that as now I have the resources to learn faster I have all of these other students around me who know more that will encourage me to pace myself in a, in, a, in a better way and I actually became friends with them when initially I was like hey you're my enemy <laughs> you know and and that really that that one thought just changed the way I thought about everything and I got a job actually working at an advertising firm this advertising firm specialized in video games and film which really got my attention and I actually got to design the packages of game covers and, and the magazine ads that they would go into. And that was really, really fun. However, I wasn't being the conceptual guy that created those characters or that created that look. After working there for a little bit, I kind of moved from company to company. I, I always kept in touch with my friends at school, which is super huge, you know. And I found myself working at this company called NCSoft, which was at that time, it was like the place to go. Like all the top names that I knew growing up and, and at Art Center were all there. So I had to go there. It was like the goal. Luckily, I was able to reach that. And um, But unfortunately, right around the tail end of 2007, the economy went really bad. And a lot of game companies folded down. A lot of them had to resize, restructure. And our company was one of those companies that had to shut down its sort of satellite studio in Santa Monica. So all of a sudden I reached my goal and then it was that it was just taken away, you know? And that's when Scribble Pad started. You know, I wanted to sort of create my own stability and make sure that I can hopefully, you know, create a, a studio where we don't have to rely on just one project or the economy to just keep us going. Um, one of the issues with working constantly on client work or working for a studio is that it's sometimes hard to explore out of your norm because you're afraid that you might miss the deadline or it could somehow compensate the success of the project. And that's why personal work is great because you can experiment and fall on your face and, and find new ways to dig yourself out and no one really knows. You know, it's, and, and that's why I think one of the things is 
those failures are always going to add to the, the, the different avenues of success and, and how to kind of like come up with new techniques. Getting any artist or student to be a little bit more on the profession, have professionalism within the industry, right? Art is such a big thing, but that's what gets you noticed. What gets you a job is your ability to communicate clearly, show up on time, have good presentation, you know, thoroughly ask questions, know what the task is about, and, and all these other sorts of things that make a good um, uh, addition to the art department. It's really about channeling your own history, your own experiences. And sometimes that's really difficult because it's putting yourself out there. You know, it's, it's exposing yourself. It's putting you in a compromising situation. But that's what makes you a unique artist. And that's why people get hired because they want you. They don't want someone else, they'll hire that person. But that's why they want you, is to be able for you to come up and bring your own personality, your own flair, your own set of spices to the mix.